appear on your screen in just a second. All righties, and hello everyone and welcome to Nominations Parent and Guardian Orientation. We are very excited that you have joined us today for this live presentation. My name is Veronica Duenas and I'm the Administrative Assistant here in the Orientation and Family Programs Office. Today we would like to welcome Mo Phillips. Mo Phillips is our Director of Student Involvement here at Sonoma State. We're very excited that she has joined us today for this presentation. Throughout the presentation, please feel free to utilize the Q&A feature. Um, we'll be checking questions and we'll address them as well. So with that, I will now pass it over to Mo to get us started. Thanks a lot, Veronica. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to quote unquote see you, although I don't see you. Um, this is kind of a unique situation for all of us. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it my, my college try today. As, as Veronica mentioned, my name is Mo Phillips. I'm the um, Director of Student Involvement. Um, I've been on campus for, this is the beginning of my 24th year. I started out in the residence halls here on campus um, back in 1997, just after the football team dis disbanded. And um, I worked in the residence halls for about 15 years, 16 years, and then I moved into programming. And now what I do is I work with programming, not computer, but events and activities. So our big night events and our welcome programs and our trips that we do and all kinds of stuff. I'll talk about that later. But um, all of the different things that we do to try to help students to feel connected um, and to, to be a part of the community here at SSU. Um, so I also work with clubs and organizations. I work with sports clubs. I work with um, fraternity and sorority life. And I also work with our general clubs and organizations like the Disney Club or the backgammon club or the chess club or things of that nature. There's lots of other more exciting ones too, but, but for now, those are some that I'll talk about. Um, so I get to work with a lot of students every day. And that's one of the things that really drives me um, and feeds me a lot is being able to work with the students. Um, I've raised my family here. My kids have grown up uh, in residential life and on the Sonoma State campus. And uh, now they're also going to college. I have two of my kids at the Santa Rosa Junior College at this point. My uh, second one is joining uh, that campus this this fall in a virtual manner. So I'm really proud of them. So I got a, I have a little bit of an idea what it's like to want to send the kids away to school. Um, and some of your students will be coming here to live on campus or live in the area and take classes to get some sort of normalcy in terms of this. But some of us are just not sending our kids away and they're staying at home and they're going to learn virtually and that's going to be great too. It'll be a different experience and that which doesn't kill us makes us stronger. So I will keep that in mind. Um, yes, please share your, ask your questions. I have a presentation. My presentation um, generally uh, goes about 35 minutes or so. And, and please keep in mind that I'm going to give you the presentation that I would give if you were here. Some of you will have students moving in. I'm going to give you the, the, the idea of what it would be like if your kids were coming right now. But then we will talk about what are some things that we're going to have in place. And I'll answer questions for you in terms of what is it going to look like this, this fall. Um, we're going to try to do our darndest to make sure your students are feeling connected and, and, and um, a part of our nomination. And so um, I'll talk to you about that a little bit later. Um, I'm going to switch over to my, I'm going to share my screen now so we can, um, let me see here. I was a recreation major on my undergrad, so this is uh, all new to me, this technology. Let's see here. All right, here we go. So the uh, presentation I'm doing, um, kind of a funny thing uh, here, if you can see the screen, um, which I think you can, on the upper left-hand corner is my youngest, Alfred. That was about eight years, or about eight years ago, yeah. Um, and we were at uh, Six Flags in Vallejo. And he, this was the first time, um, first time he was able to ride the Roar uh, uh, roller coaster. And it was very cool. Um, he, he had tried so many different ways to try to make this happen. He had a, he'd make his hair taller and try to bounce it up a little bit. He'd wear high heel shoes. He, he did what he could to try to reach that point in the, in the bar and all our kids love to get that point. But um, this day uh, at this time, he was able to ride the ride with me. And as we're riding in the rides, and I wish I was there in person because um, you can kind of see it, but as I'm riding the rides, he's like, oh, I'm gonna be in this, I'm gonna ride this ride, we're in the front there, we're gonna go to the roller coaster and we're like T -t 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 up the hill and um, we're heading towards the top. It doesn't go upside down this ride, but it is a wooden roller coaster, so it's kind of scary. But anyways, he's going up, T -t 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 -t. he's like, I'm gonna keep my hands up like this the whole time, mom, I'm gonna keep my hands up. If you get nervous, you can hold on to me, but I'm gonna keep my hands up, this is gonna be awesome. I can't believe I finally get to ride this ride. 
Well, as we get up to the top, closer, closer, t -t 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 one hand goes around me. And then as we get to the tippy top and he's looking down, the other hand goes around me. And as we go over, he's like, oh, I don't want to ride this ride anymore. Oh, I don't want to ride this ride. And I'm like, oh my gosh, well, we're in for it now. So we go back and forth and up and down in all those ways. And uh, as we get into the end, one hand comes up off of me and hanging onto me. The other hand comes up from him. And as we get in that last straightaway, um, Alfred goes, I did it, I did it. And I'm like, yes, you did, yes, you did. Um, I think I like this story and I keep his picture on there, he hates it. But I like this story because um, really the last 18 years for all of us, he's 18 now, um, the last 18 years for all of us have been ready, getting ready for these days. Um, the t -t 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 going up to the top of the hill on that roller coaster and that first drop, um, which is that first entrance into college and, and getting out on our own and, and starting to do things, maybe not getting out of the house on our own this year, but starting to do things where we're taking control of our own destiny and of kind of what comes next. And I, I think of you all at the top of that hill because that's where you're at now. Some of your kids are like this, yeah. Some of them are like, ah, and some of them are like, ah. And some of you are probably like that too. Um, it's a really tricky time. And I used to start this um, talk uh, with a song by, uh, by a singer. Um, and, and she talks about the, being, how kids are going to college and stuff like that and kind of that going up that hill. And everyone was crying by the end of the song, Susie Boggess, I think her name is. Um, and it's called Letting Go. And I was like, oh gosh, we can't do that anymore. So I changed it to a Miley Cyrus uh, tone for our program. I'm a big pop culture fan. You'll see some of that in some of the comments that I make, but looking back and moving forward, and this is about the time when she was doing the same thing, trying to figure out going to college or not and trying to get into that mode. So that's something that um, is something we're gonna talk a little bit about today. So let me get moving with this here. Um, <clears throat> today, my job is kind of to take this step that's not easy for you or for your students um, uh, and, and acknowledge that it's, it's, it's not an easy step sometimes to let go. Um, heck, my kids are out of the house now and living in other places and it's really challenging um, just not to see them every day and to talk to them after their, after their class, stuff like that. Reminding me that naturally things are gonna change. Um, that's, it's what we do, it's what we're supposed to do. You're supposed to get your kids to the point where they, they can go away to college and they can do other things. So, so this, is, this is a good thing and they're gonna have different experiences. And as it says there, some are gonna be good and some are gonna be challenging, um, but we're gonna be forever changed by these experiences. And I actually just had a phone call um, just before this talk. And, and uh, I was talking with a student who was here probably my first year, so in the early 2000s, and uh, just reconnecting with her to see what she's doing and what's going on. And, you know, a lot of students go back to talk about the experience that they had at Sonoma State and the connections that they made and how that's made all the difference for them. And, and she was one of those to say that. So I'm really proud of what we do here. And I'm excited about that. But change is hard. And I'm experiencing it with my kids too. So let's all take a deep breath together as we head into, into this semester and, and this time in their lives. Um, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the challenges and the gifts that this transition is gonna have. Um, and I have the wrong date in there, the 18th and 19th. It's actually, because we're trying to make some new plans now. It'll be that weekend of the 14th of, of August. Sorry about that. Um, and, and I say the challenges and the gifts of this. Um, it is a privilege to go to college. It's not a right. And our students are very lucky to be able to have this privilege. I think I've saw you seen that it's a really low percentage that get to go to college and even a lower percentage, maybe under 10% that actually graduate from college. So I hope that they're appreciating the gift that you're able to give them and, and, and that they're able to experience I know as a first generation student, it was really important to my family that I went to college. And it was really important to me that my kids go to college. Um, but, but there's something about this gift, and I say gift intentionally. If someone gives me this Diet Coke, which my students all know that I love Diet Coke, so often that will happen. Um, I can look at this can of Diet Coke and it's really wonderful. But not until I open up the can of Diet Coke and take a drink of it do I get to accept and experience the gift. And it's like that in college, it's like that here, that you know we, we have a lot of gifts and I, the resources that you're going to learn about this week and hear about this week and, and from here on out and that the students heard about in the last few weeks, the resources that we have here um, are that gift and, and the opportunities for them to experience the different supports 
and people that we have on campus that this is their life. They're here to help your students to be successful at Sonoma State University. So I get to work with a lot of really wonderful people and a lot of people ask me, why do I stay here so long? And part of it is, is the beautiful campus and a beautiful area of the country. Um, I think another part of it is the staff that I get to work with and, and they all are really committed from the gardeners that, that make the campus look beautiful to the facilities people that help to clean up after us and to, to the people that are, are in, in the rec center at night and the police that are here 24 seven. There's just a lot of people here to help your students to be successful. And I'm really grateful for that. And I just love working with the students. Um, we have a great program here for students, a lot of good opportunities for leadership. So it is a gift that they're getting by going away to college. Um, and, and, and I'm really grateful that your students chose to come to SSU and I hope that they will be too. Um, I wanna share with you some of the ways that we offer for your students to find a niche and start connecting. And we'll continue to do what we can this, this semester and this fall for them to do that. But really, a lot, some of it is to help you breathe a little and maybe laugh a little bit. Um, and uh, that's, what I, that's what I'm kind of up to today. So just wanna let you know. Um, I wanna talk about a few minutes, just a minute, about this Seawolf commitment that you hear about and your students will hear about. Um, and we'll do an opening event on August 17th where we will talk about this as well, a welcome for the students, for first year students. And um, uh, there was an incident that happened, a, a bias incident, um, a hate incident, many years ago on our campus, maybe eight years ago now, nine years ago. And the students came together and said, not here, that's not okay. And so they came up with this Seawolf commitment, a way for students when they come in here and staff and faculty as well, they've all adopted it. Um, it's on your syllabi for classes. Um, everyone will get a copy of the Seawolf commitment when they come in. I'm talking about it now. It's really important to us that students know that they're expected when they come here to live with integrity, excellence, respect, and responsibility. And these are the core values that our campus runs on and the core values that um, we want each other to keep in mind as they walk um, in the classrooms and walk the campus when they get back to campus. Um, and so I just wanted to tell you a little bit about that and they'll hear more about that, I'm sure. What to expect until August 14th, um, as time goes by, you're gonna prepare mentally and physically for the experience. And even though they're not leaving home for some of the students, some of your students, um, I think that it's still important to know that there's still a mental and a physical change that happens, you know, when you think I'm going to college. And, you know, I think that that's, that's kind of cool. And I've seen that a lot with the students. Um, Information is gonna be sent home. They're gonna get it in a variety of different ways. Most of it's online now. Um, as far as that goes, they're gonna find out if they're coming to campus, they're gonna find out their roommates, information about that stuff. Um, you'll get some information from other presenters on to-do lists. Um, if, if students were coming to campus this fall and if they're coming to campus this fall, I would sit down with them and come up with a to-do list. And even if they're not, come with to-do list of things that they need to get together and they need to do before they come to college. Um, and I would include younger siblings with that as well. It's important to note that for younger siblings, um, this is a, a new experience as well, most usually. And so want to give them the opportunity to hear about college and to start thinking about themselves going to college and to share that experience with your student if they can. Um, but set up a time where you can talk about the things that you need to talk about um, regarding college and kind of what that will be like for them. Um, if they're coming up to campus and one of the things that I like to note is they're going to want to spend as many times, as much time as they can with their friends. I think of the Cosby show when Denise Huxtable went to college and she really um, came back for her first visit and she just wanted to spend all of her time with her friends. And uh, it doesn't mean that they don't love you. It doesn't mean they don't care about you. It just means that, you know, they think that, oh my God, these people have been in my life for so long and then we're gonna all go to different colleges. We're never gonna see each other again. And that may be true for some, but for others, they're just, you know, just wanna spend time with them. They think you're going to be there. You know, you're, we take us for granted sometimes, I think. Siblings I talked about in the minute, usually we try to have events. If we're on campus in the spring, we have a siblings weekend in the spring where we invite students to bring their siblings to campus. We have a weekend of activities for them. Um, again, part of it is to just reconnect with their sibling, but the other piece of it is to help them to see themselves at college and to help promote going to college, maybe here, maybe somewhere else. But really what's important is that they see themselves doing that too. And they get an idea of where their sibling is. Um, and I think sometimes we forget about that. When I went away to college, my mom might have written me, probably uh, recalled me maybe a month into my being gone. And uh, she said, your brother at dinner today was like, where's Mo? And mom said, she's at college. And he goes, I know, but when is she coming home? I think he really thought that I was going to be coming home and didn't realize what going to college meant. 
And so I think that that's important to talk about that. So starting in conversations about things of importance now, um, these are things of importance, believe me, whether they're in your house or whether they're coming here. Um, <clears throat> some of it, your expectations, now that they're a college person, students may have some, some ideas that they're gonna have some freedoms and maybe you're not having those same ideas. Um, sometimes um, they wanna go out with their friends and, and do some things and they don't think that they should have to have um, a curfew or something of that nature. And maybe you're of that impression as well. Just as long as you talk about what are those expectations for them as they go away to college or as they live at home in this, this semester and how can you help them to kind of see themselves there in, in a small way. Um, if you're planning to come up here, uh, planning for the trip, um, sometimes the students just want to get here. I think that there's a lot of anxiety and they just want to get here. And I think for the same reason, because there's a lot of anxiety, the parents want to prolong that trip. So sometimes they're like, let's see the biggest ball of twine. How about that, that big thermometer over here? We want to stop by my, my college roommate's friends or house or stop here. Um, and I think both for the same reason, you both want to get here or, or delay the trip. But um, let the student drive, maybe not physically drive the car, but make, let the student drive kind of how that looks or what that looks like. Um, some skill building. You know, a lot of times this is how our students are communicating. It's how they're, they're sharing their feelings with people. It's how they're upset with people when they're angry with people. This is the way it happens is on this phone. Rarely do they talk to each other and living and working in residential life as long as I have. I can tell you that they'll be sitting on the couch next to each other arguing on the phone um, and they won't, um, they won't talk to each other about things. The great cheese caper of 2007 started with only being on the phone and then all heck broke loose from there. Someday if you see me on campus, let me know, ask me the question. I'll tell you about that, that program. You want to teach them about communication. Plunging is one of those things that really um, is a challenging thing, especially when they come on campus is they don't adequately know how to plunge. And I can say this because I've been in residential life. And this is one of those things where, you know, the, the parents in the fall when students move in, they're like, I've got my plunger. I have to stand up for this a little bit. Students just, they like little plunging. You know, I'd come to their room and I'd say, have you tried to plunge? And they're like, yeah, I tried to plunge. I'm like, you really got to get yourself in there. That's not plunging. You know, so show them how to plunge. I think that's important. Cleaning. The same supplies and sponge that you use for the bathroom probably is not the same one you're going to use for the kitchen. Things like that, they don't quite get that. Laundry is another thing they don't quite get the hang of. So even if they're home this fall, those are some things that you can probably go over with them, give them a little more responsibility. I would say if you are coming up here <clears throat> or when you're coming up here with your student, because that will happen, folks. It will happen. We will open again. Um, if the possessions don't fit in the van, I'd say don't bring the possessions. Bring the student. Um, <clears throat> but it's really challenging. Um, the rooms aren't that big. So you want to make sure that that you, uh, you're doing okay and have, have enough things. I want you to know that there are stores in Roanoke Park. We do have Target, we have Walmart, we have Costco, things like that. You don't have to bring everything with you. And actually, if you haven't been up here to see a room, you might wanna just bring the things that are necessary. And I know the stores love it when I say this, to go over to the stores. When you get here to buy the things, again, that are necessary, not the things you think they're going to need because some list got sent to you and said, you need to buy all these storage things or all this or all that. I don't know about you, but I don't have the money for that. So you don't have to buy all those things until you get here and figure out what do they need. They might need a lamp to study by. <clears throat> That's something that they might want to get. So things like that. I mean, if, if three people bring a refrigerator or three people bring a TV for their, bit, for their room or their suite, that's going to be a lot of TVs. So something they'll want to talk about with their roommates, but also something to keep in mind for when they get here. Not everyone needs a vacuum. Maybe they'll go together and put money in together to get a vacuum once they get here. <clears throat> Moving day, and then I'll move on from this. Um, Moving day, the day will start out at the GMC. I'm not sure what the plan is yet. I know it'll be that weekend and it'll probably be safe. I mean, there will be safe distancing and I know that there'll be a mechanism is put in place that we are welcoming you and, and, and get, you know, saying, hey, go, yay nomination, but also that we will be safely doing that and getting you to your space. Um, Bring a dolly or a card of sometimes to help you move in. We used to be able to rent dollies and, and stuff to folks, but with 3,100 students living in the residence halls, it's a challenge. We don't have enough dollies in Sonoma County for that. So just keep in mind, you might want to bring, there's some that fold down, they're pretty inexpensive, um, or you might borrow some from someone, but if, especially if your student's living on the second or third floor, you're going to want it. There are no elevators in the residence halls, and so that's something to keep in mind. 
Um, it also might be good to bring uh, um, the siblings along if you can. Not everyone can, but it might be good to do that if you can. Um, but uh, I know my mom and my aunt just brought me, uh, we weren't able to bring all the siblings along. So make that plan and also include your student in that too, because that'll be important for them to be a part of. It's their day, try to help them have some control over that day um, as well. So let them figure out where things go when they get to the room. I know when I moved in my first time, um, my uh, mom and my aunt moved in with me, like I said, and I went to talk to the hall director about something or the area coordinator. And when I got back up to the room, um, they had unpacked everything and put it up on my walls and my little animal tags and they put up my clothes in the closet. And I said, that's great. I love it, but that's not my side of the room. We've already talked about this with my roommate. So they had to take everything down again. So that was kind of crazy. Let them have time with their roommates, go out and take a walk. It's a really stressful time. Um, give them a chance to, to get to know their roommate and stuff like that. Same thing at home, if they're on the screen with their roommate or with their friends and stuff, give them some time to, to connect with them. Um, we're still figuring out the day, so uh, residential life is TBD right now, but they'll get that information out to you as soon as possible. Remember the time and the day is really exciting. It's scary, it's exhausting. We need to breathe. Um, and also we need to breathe about maybe some of the guilt of us not being able to send our kids away to college because of all this COVID stuff. It's not our fault, it's out of our control. Let's just make the best of it. So sometimes um, we just need to breathe and, and move forward. The first six weeks, there's so much stuff to do at SSU. When we're on campus, they're almost never alone. Um, we have events, welcome week events, um, a big night event with Ferris wheels and carnival rides and games and food and all kinds of stuff to get students out there, club fair. It's a huge event and we will have big night again and they will have it in their time that they're here at SSU. So I have to mention it because it's so, it's so important to know that there are things happening here. Um, and so they'll probably never be alone. It's, it's really challenging sometimes um, when we get everyone together. Um, adjusting to college life, roommates, expectations, academics, the virtual nature of this semester, whether you're on campus or off campus, the virtual nature is not going to be an easy thing. Because even if you're on campus, you're still gonna be on your computer in your room. Free time, dining hall food, relationships, things of that nature, lots of stuff to adjust to. And again, whether you're at home or whether you're here, I think those things are going to happen as well. Social acceptance, trying to fit in, finding their niche, getting involved, getting connected. I heard from last week's sessions with the getting involved stuff that one of the major things for students was, I don't mind being on Zoom if it means that I'll find ways to connect with people there and feel like I'm part of campus. So that is something that we're really gonna try to put a lot of effort into. They can affect it, they can change, they can recreate themselves. If your students were, and I've heard a lot of students say, I wasn't that involved in high school, um, but I'm gonna change and I'm gonna do more things when I get there, you know? Um, or I was too involved in high school, I need to take a break. You know, whatever they come with, they come with and how, and they, they can recreate themselves and kind of do some different things to get to know themselves and, and have others get to know them. So that's kind of cool about college. Um, for those on campus, they most likely will want to come home. For those of our kids that are at home, they're gonna to wanna to go away somewhere. Um, but uh, they're most likely gonna to wanna to come home. I think it's really challenging, especially in those first six weeks. So we wanna to try to make sure they connect with folks. So something to keep in mind um, that, you know, you might have some conversations where they don't seem very happy or they're kind of down, you know, and we have people on campus and students on campus, RAs on campus to kind of help with some of that stuff as well. They'll be busy though, whether they're at home or whether they are here on campus, we're gonna have a lot of different things for them to do. And it may look like they're not doing anything. It may look like the same thing they're doing because they're online or something, but, but we do have a lot of things that we're gonna try to bring to them, even though um, we may not all be here on campus. As time goes by, they're gonna make good, some good and some bad choices like we all do. Um, priorities change um, uh, because they're not living with us anymore or because you know, things, things are different. Like I said, they can recreate themselves. There's some freedoms and some things that they'll experience that <clears throat> may be similar to what we did when we went to college if we had that ability um, or if, when they were at home. They're gonna be challenged um, academically. For some of our students, they're like, yeah, that's not that difficult. I think the harder part was socially for me is what they say. Um, it's just trying to find that group of friends, trying to find that place that I fit in, trying to find those resources and the faculty and staff that can help me to be successful. So that's kind of you know, some of the things. 
They're gonna start to see their friends differently and maybe significant others. What I say here is when they come home for that first time at Thanksgiving or a second time maybe, um, that you know, through that first semester that they've been here, they're connecting with people, they're having experiences, they're having shared experiences. That's what creates community, is having those shared experiences. And sometimes they find significant other folks here that are important to them. And so by Thanksgiving, I call it the turkey drop. That person that they were dating from high school um, ends up uh, kind of being the turkey that's dropped by Thanksgiving. Sorry, but I'm bumped. Shh. Had to had to go for the, the the laugh there. But anyways, you may like that turkey better than like your own student, and that may be the case. Sorry about that, but um, we uh, we have some 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 stuff like that that goes on. Uh, midterms and finals are going to hit. I mean, it can be challenging. Um, sometimes all you have is classes all week and, and, and for a month, and maybe you'll have one midterm. Everything's called a midterm here. So um, one test, and that's gonna take all the information from that two months ahead of before it. So it's challenging. It's not the same as high school, where you go in and you have, you have activities each day of the week, um, and then you have maybe an exam at the end to test your knowledge for that week. It's not like that at college. It's, it's a little bit more challenging than that. So for some of them, they might do well those first midterms as they figure out how they're doing, or they may not. And they might not think that they're cut out for this. Um, and we need to here, and you need to there, help them to understand that you know one semester does not make a whole college career. Um, and that we just need to utilize the resources, those gifts that I talked about earlier, we need to use those gifts to help us be successful. So right now I'm gonna use my gift of Diet Coke and take a drink, so there we go. When they come home, you'll ex have expectations of what that time will be like. Um, try to talk about that. I mean, they may come home thinking that you're gonna do their laundry and they're gonna go hang out with their friends. You may be thinking that they're doing their laundry and they're gonna hang out at home with you and wanna spend all the time with you. If you are wanting them to come for grandma's 90th birthday party you're having it that weekend, or if you have a special dinner planned or something like that, talk about it ahead of time. Just so you have the opportunity to talk about that because you don't want it to get all stressful and have that short time that you have them home to be filled with lots of stress. Um, recognize that they're not trying to make your life crazy with all of the things and all of the stuff that goes on, whether they're at home and whether they're at college, at college here um, or in Rohnert Park, they're just trying to figure it out. Who are they today? Um, we did a great job of raising our kids, I'm sure, and so it's, it's, they're just trying to figure out where do they go from there? Who are they? There is always something to do at SSU, and that's something that I'm really proud of, being a program person on campus. Um, but three of the things that are really important to me and I know important to our campus are spirit, tradition, and community. And that's what I do most of the programming that I do, and I know others do based on those things. We want them to have that nomination, Seawolf spirit. We want them to know what the traditions are, whether it's big night, like you can see down there in the corner. That's our, one of our big night events. Um, we want them to know the Midnight Madness event to support the basketball team's first practices. We want them to go to Pack the Den and, and support teams or fill the hills supporting the baseball team or things like that. And we want them to be yelling during finals at 5 to 5.15 for our, our Seawolf scream um, as we have 24-hour quiet during finals time. So we want them to know about that stuff. And mostly we want them to know about the community, the community that we here, have here at Sonoma State University. And so, and, and, and how we do that is through all these activities and events and to help them get connected and feel like they belong. Belonging is so important. Everyone wants to feel like they matter. And that's important to us here that they feel like they matter. Whether they are virtually part of our campus community or they're on campus this fall or in town for those of our returning students that are gonna be living in town or local students. Um, we want you to feel a part of our Seawolf community, part of that nomination. Um, we do have over 120 clubs and organizations, like I said, sports clubs, which are not quite the NCAA uh, athletics that happen on campus and not quite the intramurals, which are kind of for fun. But these are a little bit more. There's a little money involved in this. Lacrosse team is very good and they have money. We have, we have dance. We have um, uh, cheer. We have the rowing club. We have equestrian. We have men's and women's soccer and ultimate frisbee and things of that nature. So there's a lot of ways for students to get involved just in sports clubs alone. Fraternities and sororities. We have about 17 fraternities and sororities in the Panhellenic Council, which is the women, the IMC Council, which is the men, or the MSFC, MFSC, which is the multicultural Greek organizations that we have on campus. So there's a lot of opportunity to get involved. They will have a full recruitment um, virtually this fall. I'm very excited to see how that works out. 
um, but everyone will have the opportunity to go through recruitment as if they were here. It's just a little bit different. So you'll still get the opportunity to meet people and move from different places and, and kind of get that experience. Um, we also have a lot of cultural, academic, spiritual, and social clubs from, um, I talked a little bit before, our Disney club is very popular. InterVarsity Christian Shop Fellowship is one of our biggest clubs. It is our biggest club on campus. Um, to our um, women in computer science, they do a hackathon along with our computer science club each year. Um, there's a variety of clubs and organizations on campus. Some are connected to their classes and the schools uh, help to host those. Business has a lot of different clubs, things like that. Some of them are cultural, so students can make connections with students who have the same cultural or a similar cultural upbringing to themselves. Our um, QSA, our Queer Student Alliance, is a very popular and involved club. Um, we have political clubs on campus, which always makes it fun as we get into the beginning of the year, especially this year. I'm sure it will be interesting. Spiritual clubs, social clubs, etc. If the students don't find something in our list of things on Engage at SSU, which is our platform for our clubs and organizations and finding out about some events. They'll have the opportunity also um, to come to different club fairs and to come to different events throughout the fall. Those first six weeks, we're gonna do different things each week for them to get connected with different clubs and organizations and we'll get them that info definitely. Leadership opportunities, even though the campus is virtual, we still have leadership opportunities on campus and opportunities for students to learn about leadership in the, in the, in the virtual realm. Um, this year, I'm really excited that we have a lot of alumni that are coming into the virtual realm to talk about their experience with leadership, to talk about leadership and how they use it in their daily lives, in their jobs that they have now. So I'm really excited about that opportunity. But also we have a lot of mentors and people that are wanting to work with our students and help to get them engaged and prepare them for when they're back on campus and can be a part of our leadership program. When students are here, we do some really awesome things um, and we will do some equally awesome things on campus. but or in virtually, but trips and movies are, are a couple of things that I don't know how much I'll be able to do too much of that this fall. We do about 40 trips in the spring and about 30 trips in, or 40 trips in the fall and 30 trips in the spring, where they have an opportunity to go to no cost, low cost, or higher cost trips. Could be going to the beach, could be going to work in a food bank, could be going down to the city and we just drop them on Pier 39 or to go shopping, or it could be where they are, um, a middle-sized trip might be going to museums and stuff like that, five to $10 going bowling, um, some different things of that nature. Uh, and the, the, the higher cost trips um, are things like we go to the theater to see musical theater. We go to baseball games, the Giants and the Oakland A's. Um, we've gone to Warriors games, uh, San Jose Sharks games, et cetera, et cetera. So there are a lot of different trips. We've gone to Alcatraz, we've gone to Winchester Mystery House. We'll take them, um, uh, gosh, I just can't even think about right now all the different trips we have. But anyway, um, we have a lot of bright oh, zoos, things like that. So really exciting, um, different things we have. Uh, for students that are in our CASE program or our EOP program, they'll get 50% off on those trips. For students in the residence halls that take part in our residence hall association, they get some money off, 20% off, um, et cetera. Movies, we will do some on-campus movies this spring, this fall, I believe, for those that are in the area. They'll be in the form of drive-in movies on a parking lot in campus. So I'm really looking forward to that. They might even, the Associated Student Productions might even do something with a concert, a drive-in concert or something where people could stay in their cars. We're really stretching ourselves to try to find things to do on campus as well as folks off campus. So we'll still have some events that go on. Weekend and late night programming, we do a lot of um, just to give alternatives to students that, that don't wanna go home or don't participate in, in parties or things like that that happen sometimes off campus. Um, and then we have spirit weeks. We have three spirit weeks in the year, one at the beginning, one at the end, and one in the middle. And they're usually a lot of fun, a lot of opportunities for students to get involved, have some fun, laugh, share their talents. We have Seawolves Got Talent talent show in the spring. Um, we've got comedians, we've got uh, uh, recreation events, you know, things like that, sporting events, et cetera, et cetera, escape rooms. Um, we go to the mini golf place in town here and people have an opportunity. We rent it out for free for the night. So there's lots of opportunities for students to get involved. How do they find out about what's going on? And these are some similar ways that they'll find out um, at home or whether or not on campus. See what living is our number one way for students to find out kind of what's going on. Students' emails are already added in in the beginning of the semester um, to do um, <clears throat> to do 
Um, sea Wolf Living, uh, sorry, I just spilled my Diet Coke. My gift has gone awry on my, my I got so excited about Sea Wolf Living. Every Sunday they're gonna get an email from us saying that they, um, that they have, uh, these are the list of activities that they can do that week. And, and then on Sundays, they'll have the opportunity to kind of choose what they want to do for the week. Um, and then uh, also um, we have posters and flyers that we put up in the residential community in the classroom buildings. We have banners on the rec center. Uh, this week signage in the res halls and on campus. Engage at SSU is a way that they can find out what's going on on campus. Um, so there's a variety of ways. Also through Lobo Connect, that's another way that they might find out. On uh, social media, Instagram and our um, our uh, different ways of, of, of connecting that way, YouTube channels, stuff like that. So there's a lot of ways that they'll still find out what's going on. If you wanna be uh, getting the emails about what's going on in campus, you can also go to seawolfliving.com and down at the bottom of the page, you can scroll down and um, put your email address in and you can get information too. Students won't like me telling you that, but I'm telling you. Because um, then you can say, hey, did you go to that great comedian the other night? Um, or how about that uh, family feud that we're hosting? We're their family. Let's go and take part of this event. So watch for that event to be coming up. Um, so there's lots of things. Also, we have on, on our Sea Wolf Living on the upper, upper scan, uh, bar, you can click on our, our faces of SSU. And so there's students that have uh, been identified um, as uh, some of our, our uh, primo folks on campus gives us an opportunity to highlight some of our students, their experiences, because every, experience, every student's experience is different. So it gives us a chance to highlight them. So check them out. There's some really wonderful stories. And uh, I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed always by our students and what they've gone through to get here. Some last thoughts for this, uh, and then we'll take some questions. Um, there's a lot of people in the neighborhood here. They're not alone. Um, and I just got another gift of a new Diet Coke. So that was really cool. Um, encourage them to get up and get out and get involved. Maybe it's get up out of their bed. Maybe it's get up out of their residence hall room. Get involved, get online, get on social media, find the ways to get connected. Um, it could get discouraging sometimes virtually, but we have a lot of different ways for students to find, to get involved. The way they feel today is not the way they're gonna feel tomorrow. So sometimes we have students that get really frustrated or have roommate issues or boyfriend, girlfriend issues or whatever that might be. They're not doing well academically for that test or something like that. Um, sometimes the parents will They'll have a conversation in the middle of the night. They're fighting with their roommate. I can't stand her. I don't want to be in this room anymore. I want you to come get me. I don't want to be here anymore. And you take them to heart. And I've had parents that have driven over, over hills and over dale to get to campus by 7 a.m. They pull up at their kid's door with the, with the U-Haul to get stuff out of there. And the student's like, oh, we made up last night. Everything was fine. Um, they're going to be in my wedding. It's going to be awesome. So anyways, um, that happens quite often, actually. So yeah, I give it the 24 hour rule uh, with my kids, just give them some time to cool down and usually we can have a chat about things and they feel a little bit differently. Um, important for when they're here, but also I think even more important for when they're at home, if they're home this fall, is you know that, that they're growing up and we don't want that to happen sometimes. And we say we do, but sometimes it's hard when that does happen. Um, so opportunities for us to um, treat them like adults here and for all of us when they're home, uh, that will be a challenge, but uh, um, we're going to expect them to live with others, to use their words, to to call us when they need us. We don't we don't read minds, so to utilize the resources that they have, and to know that that we're here for them if they need us. Um, we're going to challenge them. We're also going to support them. We know that you know just like anything, you can't do too much without having the other. If you challenge too much, that's no good. If you support too much, that's no good. It's a balance, and we try to do that. And we tag team if, we're if the student's not responding to us. Encourage them to use their resources. That's what we've talked about before. I mean, honestly, you know, again, we have taught them as much as we can, I think, to that point. Um, and they'll come back and they'll need us in other things too. But, but it's okay to say, you know, handle this thing on your own for now and then let me know if you still need my help. It's okay to do that because how are they going to learn otherwise? Some dates to remember. The halls are going to open not just on the 14th, that is the general beginning of it. You're gonna get some information if your student's coming to campus um, on which day you can check in and try to come on that day because they're really trying to space that out. Um, Thanksgiving is gonna be the 25th to the 27th of November, just so you know. Um, no, no classes on uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, although the campus is open on Wednesday. Finals are gonna be from the 7th to the 11th. That's really a short, a short period of time after Thanksgiving. 
um, and the halls close, um, although close on the 11th, I'm sorry, uh, 12th, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll have to change that. Uh, classes begin uh, for the spring 21 on January 25th and spring break will be March 22nd to the 26th. Try to make uh, travel plans appro uh, appropriately. And then finals week already, we got through the year already, uh, May 17th to the 21st. So that's when our finals will be and the halls close on um, in, in that at the end of that week as well. So at any rate, that's some stuff there. I'm going to click out of my slideshow. That's my presentation for now. Um, but if we have some questions, Veronica, I don't know if you're still here, or if I'm just gonna, I'm just supposed to go through the questions here. I'm, I'm still here. Um, so yeah, at this time, if you have any questions, please <clears throat> put them in our Q&A. Um, and Mo, it looks like we do have one. Um, so in, in addition to seawolfliving.com, where can parents be checking for important SSU info? Mm, info information. Um, I think that um, the website, the main website, is especially they're trying to do a lot more with the main website as far as what's happening with COVID. That'll be your number one place to go. And, and what, what things are we putting in place and how things are going that way. Um, the university also um, sends out um, newsletters I know to the residential students as far as that goes. See Wolf Living is gonna be more about information related to events and activities and things like that. Those things that from the university are probably going to go to your students SSU email um, or they're going to be on the website. So those are the places that I would look. Now the students don't all they don't have to give us access to their their emails and their life and stuff like that. That's kind of up to you to figure out with your student. This is one of those pieces where we're going to treat them like adults and I know you're saying I'm paying the money here lady and I get that. Um, but they're the ones that we're going to go to for those things. So whatever arrangement you make with them for paying for school or with your expectations Talk with them now about that because it's easier to get this info from them now uh, than when they don't want to give it to us later because maybe there's something they don't want you to see. So anyways, um, that's just my rule of thumb with my own kids anyway. Um, but those are some places that you can look. All right. Thank you, Mo. And our next question, can you please talk a little bit about safety and the role of campus police? Mm, yeah, campus police are right in the middle of the residential community. Um, in the first year villages, uh, basically. Um, and they are on campus 24 seven. They are all sworn police officers. I would imagine that there'll be a time for you to have a Q and A, is that right, Veronica, this week? Yes, so we will actually be having a campus safety panel that will happen next week. Um, so we'll be sending oh, out the perfect. Zoom information for that, um, I believe within the next couple of days. Um, so that information will be coming very soon. Perfect, perfect. I can tell you that working on campus as long as I have, um, I've really appreciated, especially when I worked in residential life and with the events and activities we have now, they are always there. Our campus is so small that it's really only a couple of minutes for the police to get to wherever we are. And the fire department's right down the street too. So if we have information, if we have incidents that go on like someone cooks in their stove and uh, they, they maybe cook something wrong or too long or the, it's, the, it's not the broiler, that's where you put the, anyway, so. Um, they, they are right down the hall, right down the way as well. And that includes the ambulance and stuff if there's any needs that way. But the police are there. We're getting a new police chief this year. Um, I'm excited. Right now we have an interim chief uh, and he was a chief for, for one, Sebastopol, which is just a couple of towns over. So he's in for now and we're gonna be getting a new police chief soon. They're in the interview process right now. But I've really appreciated the role that they play on campus. They seem to always be around. They walk around a lot, when, even when they're not called out just to go and visit with folks. We have blue lights on campus, so um, I think I tried often to see if I can be on campus anywhere and not see a blue light, and I haven't been successful. I always see a blue light. So there's uh, definitely, uh, they're definitely available in there for us. And they do educational programs for us too, for Alcohol Awareness Week, for um, our Drug and Drunk Driving Week, and non-texting, you know, trying to educate our students not to do those things. Um, we have uh, emergency preparedness programs that we do and stuff like that. So they're very available to us and, and are, are really friendly. All righty, and our next question, um, our student is gonna live on campus. What will be open, health center, library? Yeah, I believe that all, I believe that there'll be um, different things open. The health center will be open. I know we're, we're looking at uh, two classroom buildings right now. Um, the, uh, there will be, they haven't uh, listed all the hours for everything yet, but I would imagine there'll be some some different things for them to be involved in. Again, I think next week is kind of our resource week so they can talk about what they're doing 
in terms of what's open, but I do believe police and health center, all those things will be open. Um, and some of the other things to different, different levels, dining hall, different things like that. Of course, there's things that are going to be different if the rec center opens, which right now our county is in a place where the rec center, uh, rec fitness centers in general aren't open. So we can't open right now, but I know that they're working hard to come up with plans, you know, for scheduling times for students to go in, cleaning, all of those things. Same thing with dining. How can we do this safely and make sure that students are getting, you know, what they need in order to, to be successful here and be supported here, so. Thank you. Um, it doesn't look like we have any questions at the moment, but if anyone cool. has any, please feel free to um, put them in the Q&A in the chat. Um, we're monitoring both, so feel free to do either one. Yeah, definitely. There's no dumb questions. I'll answer what I can. The GMC, yes, it's, it's short for the Green Music Center. It is an amazing facility that we have on campus, an opportunity for the students um, and our, our community in general. Um, they have great shows. Um, from jazz and classical and the Santa Rosa Symphony. This is their home, but also we have some amazing summer shows. Um, the, the Darren Beach Boys were supposed to come here in July. That was exciting. We have a 4th of July festival every year. I run the kids area for that. I show movies out there on the back lawn of the Green Music Center um, for the community in the summer. They're free for the students during the year. They're free too, but um, we try to do things for the community as well. It's a lot of fun. So the Green Music Center, I do free shows out there, um, a few of them, and students can sign up to come join me for a show and then have a little dinner, or not dinner, dessert. I can't afford dinner. Out there um, after the show, and we get a chance to go. And sometimes students bring their families, which is wonderful. Um, I have a certain amount of tickets for the shows, but that's been great. Um, at GMC, we have comedians there. We've, we've done shows out there. I've done shows out there. I've had the Oakland Interfaith Gospel Choir come out and do a show. Um, some of them cost a little money, some of them are free um, for the students at the GMC. Um, usually, I think, it's, I think it's $10 a ticket for students. Veronica, do you know if that's true? I think that's what they did recently. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it's a really great opportunity. I've seen Diana Ross there, I've seen Steve Martin and his banjo band, I've seen you know, um, Fluffy out there for comedy, I've seen Megan Mullally and the guy who's married to her from What's that show, Parks and Rec? Um, so there's so many people I've seen out there. Melissa Etheridge, I mean, Josh Groban. Uh, it's just been amazing. So what a great opportunity for our students to have this here. Not only for our students to go to the events, but for our students who are in the performing arts to have a venue of this, this caliber. I mean, uh, Yo-Yo Ma and, and Lang Lang are two very, very, Lang Lang, Lang Lang, um, two very, very uh, big musicians with the cello and the piano. You may know them. I did not when I first uh, got here. But anyways, uh, they have given it like four thumbs up um, between the two of them. This building is one of the top five concert halls in the world. And I think that um, the, it's, it's built uh, kind of modeled after Tanglewood um, East out in the Massachusetts area. So it's really amazing acoustically, aesthetically, it's just a beautiful, beautiful venue to have on campus. Um, so it's just, I'm, I'm happy to be here. We've grown a lot in my time here from 800 residents when I first got here in 97 to 3,100 living on campus now. And uh, our campus has grown exponentially. The programming and the events that we do has grown exponentially. Um, it's just really been great. Other questions, other things you wanna know? Doesn't look like we have any at the moment. I think we're good. Yeah. Well. Thank you, everyone. If you do have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to our office and we can always pass it along to Mo if you'd like to ask her as well. Um, and just thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Mo, for your presentation. As a, reminder, as a reminder, we will be uploading these presentations onto the Parent and Guardian Online Orientation Program. Um, so you can view them at any time and review them whenever. Um, so please feel free to reach out to us if you need anything. We hope you have a great rest of your night and thank you so much for joining us. Yes, and if you have any other questions you just want to ask offline or you want to email me, it's mo, M-O dot Phillips, P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S at Sonoma dot edu and I'm in student involvement. So um, if you just want to find me in our directory as well, that's the way to do that. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have and you might come up with. But thank you so much for your time. Go Seawolves! And it looks like we have something in the Q&A. No questions, but thank you so much for all of this information. Absolutely, thanks. 
All righty. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mo. Bye. Thank you. I appreciate your hosting me. <laughs> yes, of course. I look forward to doing this the next few nights as well. <laughs> yeah, that'll be good. That'll be good. All right.